welcome back to the flying line podcast this is our lucky number 13 episode here today uh we're gonna just start it off with that because it's monday it's raining it's the 13th episode but it's gonna be a good time so we're here to talk a little bit uh of nostalgia fc cincinnati history we uh didn't have a game this past weekend we have a big one coming up uh for you guys on sunday uh, Hell is Real, part two of 2023. So we're really excited about that. We'll have a preview later on in uh, this episode. But today we're going to chat a little bit about our favorite moments, um, go back in time a little bit, talk about the good days. Uh, but first off, Sam, how we how we doing tonight? Yeah, doing good, doing good. Um, you know, really excited about these next two games. Uh, I think we had touched on it, you know, in, in the previous podcast episodes, like these next two games are going to be momentum shifters, right? Um, and, and it's really, it's not, nothing's going to come down to these two games, except for obviously the Open Cup game um, being literally a semifinal, right? Um, but, you know, th- these games could shift momentum in a different you know, in the league or obviously in the open cup, you know, if we do go to the championship, that would be really, really cool. Um, So, you know, I'm really excited to to talk about this upcoming week and, you know, next week, obviously as games happen. Yeah. And for me, I would say uh, um, just kind of getting back from a business trip, kind of finally back on the uh, pod, but then I got to leave again again and here for two more weeks so i am don't act like you're not going somewhere fun too man (laughs) i am going to italy let's be honest (laughs) maybe i'll catch a italian game there or something pick you guys up some swag um but anyway back to uh soccer at hand we um we are you know i'm very excited to get back to the regular season i'm just so tired of all this messy talk let's just get back to the games let's keep our streak going um, just pound some wins out. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that, especially uh, as you guys have mentioned, uh, you know, Columbus game Sunday and then have a huge game against Inter Miami semifinals of the Open Cup on Wednesday. Um, two straight, probably semifinal games for Inter Miami. They play tomorrow night against Philly. And then, um, you know, they're coming to play us at home, which will just be a massive game, especially on this little run that they're on. But like Zach said, this is an uh, inner Miami podcast. I'm sick of the messy talk. Let's get the boys back out there. Let's start winning some games. So definitely looking forward, um, you know, like Sam said, to hell is real, especially on the road. Uh, Rumor has it we're going to have a big Cincinnati contingent up there. Uh, for the game and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that so obviously like we had talked about earlier we're gonna chat a little bit more about that later on in the episode um, tonight the first part of it we're gonna we're gonna go back in time a little bit are you guys excited yeah get the reminisce a little bit oh yeah this is the um reminiscing about the first days that you brought me to the to all the usl matches I mean, check out your jersey you're wearing tonight. It's like perfect timing for it, too. It's got to be my favorite. I forgot to add this on our segment, but we can just go right into it because that's a perfect transition. But let's do favorite jerseys of all time. I think that's a good trend. And Zach, I love that white. I really, really love that white jersey right there. A little bit of the white and the orange in it. As you guys can see behind me here, every, every episode, I got some of my jerseys behind me. The white with the blue in it, pretty good touch, but I, I always love that USL one. Uh, circa, what, 2017, I think it was? Yeah, I believe so. Yep, that so, was the first match I think I went to. I think we could all agree, like, we would love to see the Diamonds make a comeback. Yeah, those Bavarian Diamonds. I, I especially like the blue and orange one. Like I guess the alternative to this one. Mm-hmm. Um, that was probably a, a top three for sure. Sam, what about you? Yeah, I mean those are OG USL championship kits. I think are pretty good. I, I, you know, I have to agree with you guys. I really like, you know, the kit that that Zach has. I really like that one. Um, if we're talking MLS, um, I'd probably go with. I'd probably go with our our 2021 um kind of striped ones, right? Um, to kind of signify the different lights. Um, the navy really, one. Yeah, the navy one. I really like that kit. Um, it, I, yeah, I just, I, I, once again, I, I think it was really cool signifying the lights, 
right? And just capturing the essence of the stadium uh, for TQL. So to me, that one stands out um, in particular, but I I don't know, Ryan, did you have another one in, in mind? Yeah, I think a special shout has to be made for the only black jersey in our history. Uh, for me, the like all black with the Toyota across it is like probably my favorite just because it's so rare. And I really hope that at some point we get another black one. You see all these teams around the league right now coming out with their third kits, Red Bulls, Atlanta's was rumored or I think leaked today on Twitter as well. Uh, with some like graffiti and everything on it I think it was right am I am I right about that I think that's what it was um, but yeah I would love to see like a I don't even know like a black with like a gray like maybe like a diamond pattern across it like a gradient I don't know something like that would be really sick um, but yeah I would say the black one is probably my favorite just because it's so rare um, going back to the USL days I think it was then I don't think we had uh black one in our current years right only uh orange blue different varieties of blue the I only guess. the only yeah yeah the only black we've ever had was uh, a goalkeeper shirt actually mm-hmm. in in 2019 um first year of the mls we had a um a our, it was our third goalkeeper shirt actually okay. so <laughs> very rare very very rare if you guys have that one out there <laughs> shout it out uh, but we'd love to hear from everyone who's watching this video. Tell us what your favorite uh, FC Cincinnati jersey was, USL days or from the MLS days. Um, you know, I think that kind of ties in a little bit to, um, you know, we, we can go favorite goal. Do you guys want to go favorite goal next or what do you want to do? Favorite game? We got a lot of options. We'll run it down. We'll do our favorite game. Sam, what was your, <laughs> what was your favorite game that you were either watching in person, whatever you want to make it, but in our history. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't in person for this one, um, but this one sticks out to me. Um, and it was FC Cincinnati's first ever MLS game um, at home uh, against the MLS cup finalist, Portland Timbers. Um, that was a three Oh victory sold out Nippert stadium, 32,250. It was absolutely rocking. And then you get the first goal, home goal ever with Kendall Waston's header. And then right after that, you get Alan Cruz's just cheeky back heel goal. Like that, it, that's ingrained into my head. Um, not only did you have, you know, a 3 0 victory, but, you know, once again, on that 3 0 victory, first clean sheet in the MLS. And it was at home in front of the Nipper Stadium crowd. I just thought that was. You know, that, that really sticks out in my mind. Um, you know, we, we started the our, our MLS, you know, careers, right, like off to a great start. Like it wasn't wasn't terrible. And then just kind of went all downhill from there. But uh, that, that kind of sticks out, out in my memory. I'll never That's forget uh, the like panned camera of Alan Cruz, like celebrating down in the corner by like the big screen there. Yeah. We'll always for forever remember that moment and then zach and i were right by the goal where Watson scored and i think if there's some video out there of the celebration like me and him are probably going crazy oh yeah it was insane. i i think i took a video of that i i gotta go back and look and see if i still have that but yeah that's definitely a, a great memory on that zach what was your favorite goal or game i should say game game all right this is a fairly unique one um i think it was uh, June 18th, 2022 stands out because that's when we kind of got out of our, let's say losing days. <laughs> so from then, from then to present from June 18th to present. So that was a match against Philadelphia union. It was a one, one draw. We've had 53 matches and we've been 27 wins, 21 draws and five losses. So wow. from then on, like we've been unstoppable and I'm just so glad that we were out of that rut that we've <laughs> been in for three years. And I don't think I could be any more happy, like definitely the most happiest I've been as a FC Cincinnati fan. Just, I would definitely agree with that. And that stats just wild, man. That's insane. Like, do you think it was just that it clicked that game against his former team? And then from there, he's like, you know what? If we can tie them, like we can take on anyone. Right. Yeah. I mean, like prior to that, it was like 
three or four losses or two losses in a row, a draw, and then two more losses. So it was like, wow, all that. And then you've got unstoppableness, I guess, from then on. But yeah, I mean, maybe he uh, picked something up from Chris Albright or something. That's pretty special. I love that. How about you? My favorite game, um, gotta be, I know the exact date, September 29th, 2018 versus Indy 11. Sam, shout out to Indy 11. Uh, <laughs> we were in our USL days, um, last year in USL, we were in that game celebrating a supporters shield victory, 3-0 win. So not necessarily, I mean, we had a big win that night. I think we had clinched like a week or two prior, but to be able to celebrate, you know, on the field, um, in front of the home fans, you know, with the shield there, our only hardware. I mean, I, I love that. That was like an all-time moment. Uh, and, you know, at that point, that that was the all-time quote of, we have more winning to do by Jeff Birding. So classic, classic moments. Um, didn't end as well as we wanted in the playoffs, but definitely a, a great game for me. Second favorite game actually might be um, Hell is Real earlier this year. Just to finally kind of like claw over the fact that we hadn't really like dominated this rivalry. And I wouldn't even say that one was necessarily like dominant, but just to like win and like just celebrate and just have pure and raw emotion, you know, after it, especially building up to the fact that we were in first place and they had kind of worked their way up a little bit too. Um, and to do it at home. So that would probably be my second favorite. Yeah, those are some good shouts, definitely. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll touch more on, you know, that, that game that you mentioned previously this season. But I, I think that that um, that game against the Indy 11, I mean, it really does stand out like kind of a, that that turning point of, yeah, this this not only this team, but this organization is destined for something a little bit more than, you know, where we're at right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Sam, how about those um, corn on the cob jerseys that just released? Don't, <laughs> don't get me started on that. Like I, those are so ugly. <laughs> no comment. I might have to buy one for your birthday. <laughs> Zach, I heard, uh, well, no, I think it was my 4th of July that I said that I like the corn. So true. I don't think Sam was on that 4th of July one, but we, we, we can ask him, I guess, what was your favorite 4th of July food? It's not corn <laughs> on the cob. It, John, my hamburger hot dog guy, but that's a different, that's, that's for <laughs> next year's pod. Oh, that's so good. Oh man. All right. So moving along to Jersey swap of all time, Sam, I know we kind of had it in our profiles. I think we touched on it a little bit, but now we can kind of explain ourselves. So let's yeah, hear it. Yeah, absolutely. We we can elaborate on our, you know, jersey swaps, all time jersey swaps. Um, you know, mine being Omar Cummins. Um, you know, I, I think for me, he I, I chose him as my all time jersey swap just because he's a former coworker of mine um while I was working at FC Cincinnati. And I just Great guy. Um, and not only has he given a lot to, you know, FC Cincinnati as an organization, but also the Cincinnati community. Um, I really got to see it firsthand of like all he's done since he, you know, he's retired, um, you know, his last season being with FC Cincinnati in 2017. And he's stuck with the organization since then um, has been really cool to see. He had 21 appearances uh, with the orange and blue during his time. Um, and so before then, MLS Cup champion with the Colorado Rapids, um, Jamaican international year after year, um, the guy is as as much of a veteran as you get, right? So um, he's my all-time jersey swap for for good reason. Man, that's hard to beat. Yeah, I was going to say that's a great <laughs> shout. And cool to see that he was the first player to turn into like going into the organization too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Giving back on that side of things, which I, you know, think is going to be a future trend year after year, hopefully. So. Oh yeah, I mean we're we're seeing it from a lot of guys, right? Especially all the USL guys. Yeah, yeah. Just shows you how close they were, how connected to the organization, especially in, you know, maybe a rocky road time of figuring out what kind of club we are, and for those guys to like see it through like we are now. I mean, 
off the top of my head, I can think of several that are still a part of the organization. Um, you know, we could list off a whole bunch of names right now, but between Jimmy, you know, Bobby Edwards now back with the team. Um, I think uh, Paul Richard or no Nicholson Nicholson, who's a, now a coach around uh, in the area. Kenny Walker briefly was around a little bit too. Corbin bone Corbin bones now back. I mean, the, you're right. A lot of the USL guys. So would be kind of cool to see some early MLS guys, but I don't think their memories were as fond as uh, yeah. what we had before. But Zach, what was your all time uh, Jersey swap for FC? Yeah, I'll go with a uh, current player, Luciano Acosta. Um, I think, I mean, with how well he's been playing this past three seasons, mm-hmm. um, I mean, he he he's close to deserving his own statue at this point. Um, at first, I was super nervous for him um, just because of all the DC fans trashing him when we um, were first announced by it. And how he was always like a hit or miss on game day. And I mean, the stats kind of show it um, like it's right, right, right now. So for FCC, he's played 94 matches and his uh, goals per 90 is about 32 uh, or 0.32, 32%. Um, and then for DC, he's at 137 matches, but his goals per 90 is at 0.818, so 18%. He's doing almost twice as well as he was when he was with DC. And wow. he was a stud then because he was getting looks from Europe and whatnot. So I, I just wish he deserved – I mean, he deserves a little bit more than what he's gotten at this point. But, I mean, he's he's a stud, and I think uh, he's well-deserved of Europe. Yeah, absolutely. Like got to be the biggest like player we've ever had. The shortest player, but the biggest in terms of heart. I, guess and, uh, I was going to say. Absolutely. And like for the community, like at, all, everything. And I mean, that kind of touches on my guy too is the same way, but got to be the biggest shout for like statue building. Um, and, oh, with, without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt. First Jersey retired, you know, statue, whatever you want to call it, you know, he he embodies you know what we want FC Cincinnati to look like. I know there are certain times where we're like, well, Lucho, you know, don't you know complain as much, don't drag your feet as much on the pitch. But you know that's him playing with his heart on his sleeve, right? And and so we will take the positive moments over those negative moments any day of the week for sure. Uh, just incredible embodiment, like Sam said. Um, would love to see his son play for the team too. Would just be so cool to like have the first father son you know like that come up to i don't the know academy. if lucha's yeah. what'd you say they come up through the academy yeah i mean like imagine if lucha's still playing at like 38 39 and like his son now joins him on the team like would just be incredible so really uh hoping that we can lock in an extension for him pretty soon um but uh <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know when that's going to be announced but it sounds like it's in the workings so yeah, Ryan. My who got yeah. All time FC jersey swap is Emmanuel Ledesma. Shocker. Uh, 59 appearances, 22 goals, two assists. Had uh, one year, I think, where he just tore it apart. 2018, he's the USL MVP. Just incredible. I don't think that he had two assists um, total, though. I think he had way more than that. I think I'm looking at the wrong stat. He had like 18 assists in 2018, I think. But yeah, yeah, that sounds was, understated. I'm like, yeah, yeah there's no there way was, it's two. Yeah, yeah. No, he, there was double. There was a double digit season there. So many 16 goals and 16 assists, I believe, is what it was, or something like that. But he, for me, has like some of the best goals that I can remember to date, um, from especially the USL days, but just the audacity to take some of the shots that he did, you know, we would be like, Oh, he's by the sideline by the benches and just (laughs) fires one over top of the keeper. I just had never seen anything like that before. Um, So we could still probably use some of that to be honest with you, Oh, Um, but definitely loved his game, loved how much he was engaged with the fans and is still engaged with our FC fans. I mean, to this day. So, you know, if the organization is listening, watching, I mean, you got to get this guy somehow back involved with our 
you know, organization and everything. Uh, maybe it didn't end well, you know, and after our first MLS year, but like he still bleeds orange and blue. I mean, you can see it in all his posts, the way he interacts with people. Um, so I would love to see him come back and, you know, work with the team um, would be my second shout for a uh, retirement Jersey, because I don't think anyone's going to wear 45 again. So. Yeah. I, I mean, if you're going to pick somebody from the USL days that der- deserves a statue, but Desma's the guy that deserves a statue for the USL championship days. Like, like Ryan said, a, a player that we haven't, you know, really seen like Lucho has been a great player, but we haven't had a player like Ledesma, a guy that literally will take a shot from wherever and will bang it from wherever. And the, the still doing shot, it. exactly. Still, he had still one do, for like, still doing it. Yeah. Vegas and another Argentinian. Right. True. Right. Like about Cincinnati's it. history of Argentinian players, just it runs deep. Right. So yeah, Ledesma, what what a player. Like what a guy. It's just world world class in, in truly everything he does. Zach, any comment on uh Ledesma at all? Or are you still just remembering all the moments that we I had? mean he's got a wicked left foot. <laughs> wicked <laughs> nothing on his right, but wicked. Him and Barriola have something in common. <laughs> That's true. They something have something about in it. common. Yeah. Argentinian too. I mean, yeah. what the heck? <laughs> Did he lead our team in scoring in the first year of our MLS year? Uh, no, that was Alan Cruz. Gotcha. I think he was close. I think he had six goals, but Alan had like eight or nine. Yeah. Yeah. It was close, but he had a pretty decent year. Even translating it to the MLS was pretty nice. Yeah. I'm hearing the rain out, you know, my window. Let's talk some down days. Uh, (laughs) what about, uh, all time cards, Sam? Let's hear it. Yeah. I mean, pretty i mean for me uh, as far as mls day is pretty easy to choose from as far as you know all time cards or or low moments but um you know in general for me it was obviously the three wooden spoon years in a row um but if we're going to be specific um the worst being just the 2021 season um that that season for us ranks sixth the worst all time in mls history um we were 4 22 and 8 and out of those three, the first three years that we were in the MLS, those first three seasons, we hold three out of the 11 worst records in MLS history. So um, I would say very, very low start to the MLS. Um, to, in my opinion, I, I thought we rushed a little bit into the MLS with not much of a plan. Um, so unfortunately, you know, that's that's just how it went. But yeah, that would be, you know, kind of my all time card. Hey, Sam, at least uh, we'll have three uh, world records the next couple of years. So <laughs> no worries on that side. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would say, honestly, for me, it'd have to be 2020, the year 2020. That's year two of our um, uh, MLS days. Um, kind of similar to Sam. I mean, after year one, I think we were all just like, what did we get into? And then by the end of year two, uh, I think we were all just like scratching our heads and just exhausted from everything. You had COVID happening. You had the bubble. Um, it just it was not a great year for football, uh, soccer, you know. Um, it, it, and we had just um, – like I guess we had two coaches in two years, so – or knows it three, four, four and three years. That's what it is. Sorry. I'm trying to do four the math. And, and three, I'm looking yeah. at it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would say year two, just dreadful, horrible day. 2020 horrible was year, a bad sorry. year for a lot of reasons, but yeah, especially for, yeah, absolutely. That part of things. I mean, just brutal soccer to watch, especially in the like bubble tournament. Like, I don't know if you guys remember watching the games where we'd like bunker down and like maybe get a shot. <laughs> like potentially you might get one shot. Yeah. I think all we did was bunker that year. That's what that, I think that's what unveiled our uh, back five though, that I think out of the MLS's back tournament is where we like created the back five um, defense. And then from there, like we didn't look back. 
I guess. Fair point. I guess <laughs> if you want to say wanna... that was a positive that came out of it, but there was not much else that did. So, yeah. Um, Ryan, what about you? My all time card, I'm going to go more specifically one game in particular because we were celebrating my birthday in February and we lost five to nothing against Austin. I had a birthday party. It was an FC celebration. Zach, like you mentioned, we had just like three like terrible years in a row. And I'm like, oh, new coach. Like, we're going to be fantastic. Like, we have all these new guys coming out. (laughs) First game of the year. Austin's a new team. We got this. Five to nothing. We also all thought Austin was going to be trash. But yeah, that also turned out. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm glad that they figured it out, you know, in uh, June 18th of 2022 when they had to draw against the Philadelphia Union and turned it all around, <laughs> drawing that back to the earlier date there from Zach. But there you go. Uh, yeah, Austin game was terrible. I think you both were at my party, so you can we were. see uh, the yeah. all-time worst moment uh, in my FC watching history. I, yeah, I just remember my wife, Emily, just... Oh, I'm not going through this again this year. <laughs> I think we were all thinking that, like, uh, do we need to, like, get rid of our tickets? Like, I was yeah. at the point where I was like, this is just getting ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we'll be celebrating big time events coming up soon in our home stadium for some great moments. That was a low, low, but I think some high highs are coming up soon. Any yes, of. Uh, yeah. Any final, I guess, do you want to say like favorites of our past couple years or even going back to the inception? We just had an eighth birthday of the club this past week. Um, so I can't believe it's already been eight years. A uh, little special special shout on that. Um, growing up, like obviously being a soccer fan, just so cool again that we can, you know, cover this team. We all enjoy watching them. We miss it. I mean, shoot, this past like, week or two has just been terrible as like a FC supporter just because I want to see him play and we've gotten so used to seeing him play so many games this year um it's definitely good for them to get some rest but as a supporter and a fan you know you want to see him out there you know maybe we're playing a little bit more FIFA now that we have time we're playing uh the new game that's coming out here soon I don't know what your guys' thoughts on that are but uh, yeah FC yeah I think uh we should be ranked fairly decently high on that game you know i mean it's the first first uh game of the name change so it might be a must must buy true yeah true true were you guys uh fifa collectors did you guys collect the games through the years wouldn't say collectors but i know you were (laughs) it was definitely was the first year that we could play as fc was probably my favorite moment of like video game history just because obviously fifa is like the best sports game in my opinion um but then to like have your hometown team that you can play as and like run your whole career through them and everything like that's a dream that's just the the best thing um so real quickly let's touch on our our favorite goal and then we'll we'll go to a break so sam let's hear it what was your favorite goal yeah favorite goal um you know for me there there's a there's a lot right that you can choose from um for me, I really, what stood out to me as like favorite goal with like energy and everything else. Um, I would probably have to say the hell is real derby in 2021 at TQL, um, Mm. Edgar Castillo's goal off of a ridiculous dribbling obstacle from Lucho, um, in the first 30 seconds of the game and the strike from Edgar from outside the 18 yard box, just like the whole sequence was extremely electric. Um, you know, once again, Lucho just kind of toying with the defender, tiptoeing the sideline, you know, leaves the ball into an area that nobody was there. And it was like, okay, like, all right, great ball. Like good, good start to the game. We get into their end. And then Edgar comes out of nowhere and just drills it. Right. Takes a little bit of a deflection, but straight into the back of the net was just absolutely electric. And I believe, I I think I was, I was into, I I think we were there for that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the atmosphere is probably one of the better ones I've seen for Hell is Real and like the five games that I've been to for Hell is Real just because of like the build up to it and being a new stadium and everything, too. I think it was that year. 
and then you like get up to like okay kick off and it's like everyone's going to like settle down and then all of a sudden it's this massive goal like unbelievable goal and from our vantage point too we were across from the bailey to see it unfold which is yeah incredible yeah i've been not so fortunate to uh watch a columbus or a hell is real game but it seems like every time a match happens like i gotta do something or i'm out of town it's ridiculous but no good call sam i think that might have been also the quickest goal we've ever gotten true maybe i don't know you might have to check that probably yeah (laughs) um uh, for me, it's, we're going to go back also to our first um, MLS match. With um, we we lost miserably, but we had the greatest goal of that match. Um, probably the best first goal of any uh, MLS team um, with Bertoni's volley outside the box um, against Seattle. I mean, that thing was a missile and I thought we were winning the MLS when he made that goal. I oh, like, I know we're it's like winning it all. How are we dominating Seattle? Like you said, like so one of the best teams in the MLS the previous year. And then you just see this absolute, uh, the control too, that he had was just awesome. But yeah, it was, it was a um, fun one to watch. Cause I was down in um, or up in Dayton uh, with the uh, hangar nine, three, seven, that was the first first match, believe it or not. Uh, I think they were formed uh, shortly after that. But yeah, it was fun. I remember where I was as well. Like, isn't that funny? I was just about to ask you, like, do you remember where you were when they scored it? Like, I was in pins on the second floor and was watching with a big crowd of FC fans, like, that were just out that night. And they're like, oh, we have an MLS team now. And like, boom, goal. And I'm like, see, look, we're good. And then like, <laughs> told him not to watch the rest of the game. But... Sam, do you remember where you were? I don't remember where I was, but like I remember watching it, right? Obviously, the anticipation being just we're ready for MLS action. And then the first goal of the game is us, you know, let alone what happened, you know, the rest of the game. But that that first goal of the game was us. And so for the first, you know, however many minutes of the game there, we played really well. The goal happens. We're electric, like. There were, you know, to Ryan's credit, it felt like we were going to win the MLS. That like we were going to win the cup, like right then and there. But obviously, that did not not come to be. Little did we know. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you want to finish this off on that? Yeah. Um, sorry, man. I was just reminiscing. That was a great moment. Um, <laughs> Barrial's goal from earlier this year is the best I've ever seen in person, like in soccer in general, and the best in FC history, like. Took it off the volley from the corner, upper 90, like incredible. Just absolutely the most insane goal I've ever seen. Like I had one myself that I'm not going to like parallel to that, but uh, playing club ball in Virginia, there was a cross that came over to the defender and I took it on the volley and scored it. And like, it was like a college showcase. And I was like, dude, I'm going to the MLS. Like, <laughs> and then I looked around and like all the coaches had already like walked away and I'm like, was my moment could you even believe you scored it i couldn't believe it because the ball fell right over the guy's head he was going to head it and it fell right over and i just took it on the volley so i mean i could at least see it was with my dominant foot so it was barrials with his dominant but just the technique to hit it out of the air like that like you just respect it so much um you know playing the sport um so no (laughs) ways am i saying that they're (laughs) at all like but (laughs) just understanding how difficult it is to see him do that. And then for them to attempt it again, like they kept doing it. Like I think in leaks cup, they tried to do it again. Yeah. A couple of times. Yeah. So be on the lookout for, you know, banger number two, but uh, just unbelievable. So I will say that's, that's the most stunned I've ever been. You know, obviously the, the goal I'm talking, I was pretty stunned after, you know, my favorite goal, but the the Barrial goal. I was there for that one. Watching the game, watching the Open Cup game, I I didn't know what to do. Like I I was just yeah I was yeah. stunned because you know once again those kind of strikes happen. FIFA you know, one out of fifty balls. Like In if you're FIFA. lucky, yeah, insane. Sam, I... go ahead, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I said that at the same time. No, I was just gonna say. I mean, I if if the 
I think you had mentioned first on the notes that you um you had that goal and I was actually going to do that same oh, one. We were all going to do that one. Come on. <laughs> I mean, we were all going to do that goal. Let's be, let's honest. be honest here. And, and Incredible. With um, and not only that, I also th- considered um, a close second, Madunyanin's um, multiple Olympicos. Yes. Yeah. yes. Like, dude was a killer on those corner kicks. Right. That was that was in my repertoire as well as I had um, uh, Brenner's uh, uh, hat trick with his bicycle kick being the second goal. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Sam, real quickly, let's hear our trivia question for this week. Yeah, let me hit you guys with the trivia question of the week. Um, this one's a little unique. Um, since FC Cincinnati joined the MLS, how many clean sheets have there been in the Hell is Real rivalry? In the MLS? Yes. I'm going to go with maybe one? One. I'm going to go with one. One. Okay. Zach? I don't think there's ever been a um, – I think there's always been a goal in a game hmm. for both teams. So we're going to go one and zero? Yeah. Okay. One and zero, final answers, and uh, we'll give you guys the answers here after the break and the second half of the pod. So Agility is a technology-driven soccer training facility. So we offer six facets of training. Uh, that would be Tech Touch uh, with ball launchers that work on your first touch, the TSZ. Uh, which is the ESA equipment and working on decision making. We also have a circuit. Uh, circuit training would be taking the ESA equipment to the next level. It's kind of like a soccer obstacle course. Then we offer neuroscience training with our reflection tools, uh, working on processing things a little bit faster and eye coordination and such. Uh, we offer skills classes, which is your typical corporate skills training. Um, lots of people still enjoy that. So we work on a lot of attacking 1v1 skills. And then we also offer athlete development. So our athletes come here and they work on speed, agility, uh, quickness, explosive movements, really just learning how to move and function a little bit better as an athlete. Welcome back, everyone. Um, We're going to chat a little bit now on the Columbus Crew game this coming Sunday. We uh, had just kind of dwelled in the past in the first part of the episode and just reliving a lot of the glory days, but we got a lot of winning to do, you know, Jeff Birding quote right there. Um, so very excited about the game on Sunday. Hell's real part two, uh, 2023 before we kind of do a deep dive and a preview. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you gents because the premier league just started this past week. Any uh, predictions or uh, anything like that that you guys are are looking for in the Premier League? No, I mean, I'm not really (laughs) looking for much. Um, I I think this season, in my opinion, um, I think Man City will will run away with it again. Um, I I think there may be some shades of another team like Arsenal or, you know, I don't know, maybe Liverpool, you know, stepping back up. They made a couple good signings. Um, I just, from an American perspective, it hurts to see Chelsea, like if they were to do bad, um, because it just, it, I think it ruins the American reputation in European soccer or even soccer, like from a world perspective of like, yeah, you guys don't know how to run a team or coach a team or anything. Cause you know, we saw, Jesse Marsh kind of get kicked out of the Premier League with Leeds. Um, so I, I'd hate to see kind of the same thing happen with Chelsea if they were to not finish outside the top four. But that's that's kind of my opinion of what's happening in the Premier League currently. Interesting. Um, I would say uh, I'm focused more on championship this season um, as Leeds, you know, got relegated. So um <laughs> I'm sticking with it. I'm going to try to try, <clears throat> try to stick with leads uh, through thick and thin. So hopefully um, they pull through, but after seeing some of the players they're losing, um, getting loaned off like Jack Harrison just got loaned out. Um, seeing Where's that he going? Of, uh, I won't, I was going to say Burnmouth, but that was. Um, oh, I think else. Tyler, Tyler Adams. Tyler Adams. Burnmouth, yeah. yeah. Um, 
No. Oh, uh, is it a Premier League? Is it is. Uh, I think Everton. Everton. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm. Mm. He might be back down. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> right back down. <laughs> right back down. I mean, honestly, I'm I'm not really a fan of any of the um, top five teams. I mean, Newcastle might be my, my um, one to follow just because that's my brother's um, team that he likes. So I think I'll probably just be rooting for them this season. But, I mean, really – I, I play fantasy uh, Premier League. So um, last season, Holland was just a cheat code. So, like, if you didn't have him, so it, it might as well just lose that game because everybody's got him. So, really, I, I just don't think um, anybody else, I could see anybody else in the top other than Man City at this point. So, and it's only been the one week, game week. So, yeah. true. We'll see how, we'll Ryan, see how the, you got. Uh, I mean, I think City, you know, Sam and I are big City people. We always have been. I mean, I think they're going to dominate this year again, but I think you're right. I think Arsenal is going to make it close. And then I would love to see Newcastle actually, like, get top three and, like, go to Champions League would be really cool um, just to see another club up there, something different. Um, but I, I wanted to kind of transition this into our FC Cincinnati podcast. I have an honorary trivia question for you gentlemen tonight how yep. many fc cincinnati players have played in the premier league oh usl um, and mls days that's a great question i'm i'm gonna go with four can you name them <laughs> no <laughs> no no shot. <laughs> All right, Zach, what about you? Yeah, I total guess like Sam. Uh, four sounds like a lot. Um, I'll go with two. Two? Okay. I can't. I can't name them. Don't know who wanna, they would be. Do you, do you guys want to hear it now? Because you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the yeah. bonus question. So it's eight. Oh wow. Eight people. No way. Eight FC Cincinnati players have at one point played in the Premier League. Wow. Pretty cool. At least one match, I'm assuming. One match, yep. And so Jeff Cameron, Matt Miazga, Rowan Lama played in a Premier League game. I was shook to see this. Man, also, the, you know, another you one. Have, yeah. Deckel Kanan played in the Premier League. Insane shout from our USL days. Just unbelievable defender still wears the sambas love it um we had uh that was four i think right that was four uh sam de young played in the premier league mm. at one point all right oh my god i missed all these people dude unbelievable <laughs> justin hoyt justin hoyt jurgen locadia and tyler blackett i believe is the eighth one there a lot of oh. defenders yeah isn't that crazy that's Special wild. shout for, I think there's two or three that played in the championship. Kyle Scott played for Chelsea, didn't make it in for the Premier League. Uh, Makocho played in the championship for Brentford. So that was kind of cool to see that. Um, and then when you do the Google search and you're like, how many FC Cincinnati players have played in the Premier League? And like you go and look and it says like Kakuta Mane. And I was like, no way, dude, that's not right. So I like looked further and it said Canadian Premier League. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that ain't it. Yeah, not the, not the same, <laughs> not it. the same. So I had to like filter and go and look through. But I thought eight was pretty cool to see that they we've had that many people in the Premier League at one point. Yeah, or I, I guess mean, total amount, but. Most of them, obviously, at the, the end of their careers, but. I don't know, man. Justin Hoyt grew up in the Arsenal Academy, and he's still open out wide right from what I hear, so. <laughs> All right, so. uh We'll transition a little bit from Premier League. Let's get back on track with, uh, you know, the Hell is Real Part 2. Like I said, it's this Sunday at 7.30. It's a little night game uh, at a website stadium, <laughs> lower.com stadium. Still hate that they have the .com part in there. I don't know why it needs to be that way. Um, can, I, can I just say something about stadium names? Yeah. I just found out that it's called Drive Pink, not DRV Pink. Yeah, what? 
Sorry, I just had to make that comment. I feel really dumb for it, but tell you what, they're not not well named. They're not well named, but they probably make a lot of money. So whatever. Uh, number one, SC Cincinnati versus number six, Columbus Crew. Um, looking forward to just an epic battle again. We'll look a little bit different this year with no Zella Ryan. Um, for those who didn't see that, they're number 10. Um, they're probably arguably best player. Um, had left to go to the Saudi League, and now they have a new transfer in, uh, Diego Rossi. So a former LAFC player just came in, I think, for about 7 or $8 million. Um, mm-hmm. Plays more as like a winger than he does in the central area, but from what I'm hearing, they might use him underneath one of the strikers and kind of have him drift around to different positions with Cucho which will be interesting for our back line. And I hope they're ready. So Sam, um, what are your initial thoughts of hell is real? Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we touched on the game previously this season and that was a three, two victory for us at home at TQL. Um, And that was a very, that was a a really good soccer game. That was a very back and forth um, and and just fun to watch. Um, Very stressful at times, but Fun to watch. Um, Junior Morena gave us the the winning goal on that, I believe, in like the 67th minute. Um, but yeah, both teams have changed a little bit since then, you know, either adding or losing a couple players, new transfers coming in. Um, on that game, though, what stood out to me the most was the Columbus crew having 70% possession that last game. And so I- I'm very curious to see with those new arrivals that each team has, like what, what's going to be the game plan? Like, how's that going to look different from the last game? Right. So I think FC Cincinnati really needs to come out of this game and be dominant on that possession forefront, especially it being an away match. Right. And so you need to solidify yourself in their home stadium and say, Hey, we're not like, we're not backing down from this. Like we're going to, we're going to go at our pace this game. Right. So that's kind of what I expect from this game. Nice. I was going to say um, Columbus are just a bunch of sellouts. I mean, they're just selling Zellerion over to the Saudi league. Just, just give us our money kind of thing. Like, you know, they're, they're just known for doing that. So I, I honestly, jokes aside, I think Zellerion is a better player than Diego Rossi. In my opinion, I think he's better fit for the team. Um, I, I don't just just remembering from what I saw with him on um, LAFC, it just seemed like uh, this is a bad take because I don't know him that well, but um, it, he just he's got to have certain people, um, it, I guess, to support him, and he's he's not the playmaker, I don't think, um, like Zellerion is, and I think what Columbus needs is that, and I think uh, coming out. Um, of the break. Uh, I guess we're both had a nice long break, but um, I think we might be stale, but I want to make sure that uh, with this game, it kind of helps, like Sam said, solidify our momentum going forward and pull out additional wins. Like we got a big game, right? Three days later, four days later, three three days later. And so I think, that'll help pull us with uh, the momentum through if we can get some, uh, at least a point I'm, I'd be happy with a draw, but um, truthfully, I, I really hope we um, pull out a win. Yeah. Good point. Especially timing wise. Um, you know, we've had a big break and anytime you play games within three or four days, it's tough, especially, you know, going, I mean, not too far, but still up to them, an emotional game, coming back home and having to host. So it will be really interesting to see how we line up for it. Um, We always talk about what the lineup is going to look like. What's the back line going to look like? Honestly, it's a pretty good test to play them first with, uh, you know, Diego Rossi with Cucho, you know, pretty solid up front um, lineup that will get us ready. Nothing's going to get you ready to play Messi, but you know, you're playing a, an offensive type team which maybe sets you up a little bit better than if you play, you know, I don't know, Red Bulls or somebody that's pressing, but not necessarily like attack based or something like that. Um, So I'm interested to kind of see, you know, like Sam said, how do we show up like right away? Like you have to, in these rivalry games, like 
step up. Like we saw it the last time we played them at home is like punch for punch, pound for pound. You just give it right back. And I think the crew are trying to build a team based where, you know, I guess Zach's point, like they don't necessarily have like a superstar 10 anymore, but guys can fill in a lot of roles and play different pieces that set them up. Well, you know, they have arguably the best transfer window. I think of any team in the MLS with getting Gressel out wide, a new center back with getting another guy that can play up top. Thought you never rated Gressel. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, who knows? We'll see. We'll see how he fits in. He's only played like one game with him. So all these guys are coming in new. Like it's yeah. fresh for them to bring all these guys in and to play us where our guys have been playing together all year this way. Um, so I hope we can really just gel in that sense. It sounds like fresh meat. Fresh meat. <laughs> I, I, I just to add on to that. It, I, I was looking at some stats and it looks like neither team has kept a clean sheet in like seven games. So hmm. uh, at least seven games. So both teams are goal scoring um, high number teams. I think referring to their last games they've played. Correct. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 Um, Columbus. Uh, God, you just really threw me off on that comment. Sorry. No, it's all right. It'll come back, but yeah, I, I think um, with the uh, Columbus, I think they're going to, um, Oh, that's right. Um, so they had the uh, highest score uh, with their goal differential. It's not the best, but they have the most scored goals, I believe, in um, at least the East. Um, so their defense is lacking, but it's it's a glass cannon, so to speak. Good good transition into what do you guys? You know, we talked about it for actually the the past two podcasts, but this game, right? And you have the messy game. Who are we going with? Are we going with Celentano or are we going with Alec Khan? I think we go Roman in it just because it's familiar. And MLS, we've been playing that way. Um, and he played in the first one. He can kind of sense the rivalry. He had, if you remember, he had the save that saved the game. So yeah, he'll yeah, be yeah. he'll be amped up to play in it again, I think. And with the fact that like Khan's been or can Khan, whatever, has been playing so well. Um you know, it's pushing him. And I think it's just going to like increase the way that he's playing, especially in a rivalry game and everything. But good question. Zach, what are your thoughts on that? That's an interesting question because it really could be either or, in my opinion. Celentano well, has yeah. not played a game in it's um, been over, a, a, I think, over a month. Over yeah. a month now? Over a month. Yeah. Oh, well, it will be by the time we had they Leagues play. Cup the entire month. By the time they play, it will be, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'd I'd be comfortable with either. Well, so the, the other predicament that I'm not like, do you put because obviously, like in my eyes, Celentano is the better keeper, right? So do you do you play Celentano against the crew, which very important rivalry game, or do you play Khan and then save Celentano for the U.S. Open Cup against Messi, right? Play your best keeper against you know one of the best players in the world. Sure. Yep, or do you yep. stick with Alec Khan, who's been playing the Open Cup games, the League Cup games in that game? You know what I mean? Like, it's a very interesting scenario that we have the next couple of games. They think I think they'll probably see, like, you know, in this week, how does one, you know, fare versus the other? And then really, like, make that consideration on, like, you're in a semifinal game and, like, you know, who's going to play better under the pressure in a tournament style? You know, who's been playing in the tournament type knockout stuff? Who's been doing the PK shootouts? Mm -hmm. Who yeah, do you I was play gonna, in was, a semifinal? I was going to ask who's the better PK stopper that might come down to it. I think that's I why mean, they yeah, set I mean, him we've up only, that way. We've only seen Khan in those scenarios. Like Salentano, I don't think, has been in like a tournament. They're setting him up battle. for the Open Cup semifinal. I guarantee that's why they did it that way. Yeah. But good question. I mean, it poses that and it poses with the games, how close they are. I mean, who would you prefer uh, to basically Mark Messi? Would you want Hagelin or would you want Murphy? That's the question. Uh, Don't even put that. Do we have to choose? Roll the dice. <laughs> Roll the dice. You know, what's, you know what's funny that you say that, though? 
I was looking at just different stats for, you know, this episode. And I found out that actually this season Haglin has on average, like per game, the most aerials won. Hmm. If that means anything. I mean, Messi is short. So I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say probably not against Messi. It doesn't mean anything, but, but honestly, I, I think I would have Hags cause he, I, I always think of him shutting down Zlatan and it just, yeah, he rises to the occasion. He does. It's not, not going to, it's not going to look pretty, but he'll do it. Right. There's going to be a lot of fouls. He's going to draw a lot. Uh, dude, I swear if we come out and well, we'll get to our messy preview soon, but I feel like, um, you know, having uh, Obi in the middle, just go in on the first tackle to set the tone. is just going to be yeah. the way that we're going to play that. But um, I don't think there's any rule about like if Obi gets a yellow card in the crew game or anything like there's no crossover for him missing the inner game. Nope. So yeah, I would say he's probably our p- most important player to keep healthy from the crew game into the game on Wednesday. So well, that's that's the thing also about the last game, the last Hell is Real games. There was only two yellow cards in the last. Was there game. really? Wow. There's, yeah, there was only two yellow cards. I think there was like maybe twenty fouls though. So, I mean, it it was like a heavily fouled game, but it was properly refereed. Yeah. So that'll be the key, I think, again, for this week is to have a ref that understands the moment and doesn't try to make it all about him. Like, I've just seen it so many times this year that the refs have just been more about like themselves and like getting the calls right and stuff. And it's like, or I guess from their side of things, I should say, but, but just call the game the right way. So. That'll be interesting. There's a lot of like good like thinking or like thought provoking things. Storylines, yeah. Yeah, a lot of big storylines, especially with a break like this. Like you haven't played for a couple weeks in a competitive game, and then you're gonna go and play at your rivals. Like that's huge. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see. Um, definitely looking forward to just the MLS kicking back off. I think we only have what like 10 games left in the season, in the regular season. Um Let's push for it. Let's really get after it. And this will set the tone of how we're going to play. I would love to see, um, you know, I had a terrible taste in my mouth from the last game that we, you know, got to see against Nashville. Just the offense just kind of collapsed all of a sudden. So getting Barial fresh legs, Lucho fresh legs, Vasquez finally to have some break because he used to play it all the way through with U.S. team and everything. Um, I, I think you'll see a different team and they're going to be, I think they'll be ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I agree. we can we can get some um actual Bupenza goals mm-hmm. coming in. And hopefully he kind of gets his uh feet on the ground and kind of I'm calling for a long strike. This would be a good game to have like a just a rip from outside. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just a yeah. Pro- a proper banger. We've been talking about great goals that that would just be ideal for the top bit, top bins preferably. Top bins, top bins. But I guess Zach kind of like touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, I would be okay with getting a tie if it meant that, you know, we win the inner game for sure. You know what I mean? Like seeing that we like tie, you know, up there, I never, I want to beat them obviously, but you know, in a setting of like, all right, we're, we're got to play to this and then we're going to really focus all of our emotional attention and everything on, the semifinal game if Um, if if you guys were controlling the schedule which game would you want first would you want the messy game first you want the hell is real game first oh Oh, definitely the way it's set up right now because then you have at least one game under your belt that's a regular season you could still potentially have the lead in the standings and then you have a knockout game right after that that like now you've had a game to kind of prepare yourself to get back to game speed um, nothing's going to prepare you to play the best of all time, but at least you had one game prior after a break of a couple weeks. Well, I, I'd rather have a bad game against Messi than a bad game against the Columbus crew. Yeah, but it's a semifinal and you're going for a cup. That's uh, in, in my, I, I think we'd get more crap from the crew fans if we, you know, lost it's one game. Yeah. I mean, when is the last time we were in a semifinal? Long time. 2017. Yeah. USL. 
Believe against it. Red Bulls, and we blew it. We had a lead, and we blew it. So I, I, I just think for the moment, and like at this point in time in our history, like trophies are like a Obtain. thing that every time yeah. you talk about how many spoons do you have, how many spoons do you have, it's like, well, we just won U.S. Open Cup. You're not going to say, oh, well, we lost to the crew, you know, August 20th. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Like, to me, that's like more of the bigger storyline. And it'll be interesting to see because so for the USL game, we are third in the order for like hosting a final, um, which means I think Houston has to win against RSL and we have to win for us to host it. Which again, we'll touch on next episode, but Sorry to go against you, Sam. I just feel like in the moment of what it is. But I mean, Zach, what are your question. thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't mind my thoughts. Don't don't worry about them. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I might have to go with. I, I think a cup is more important right now, in my opinion, than because Inter Miami has been playing and they've been gelling for the past month, and they're going to be coming hot off. Uh, Leaks Cup, and I'm just assuming they're gonna just take it to the house. So I'd th- I'd say knocking them out of Open Cup is way more important than a uh, Crew game because I do not want to see people get all excited. Oh, because Messi's here, they're winning all these trophies now, and it I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear opinion. it either. So. Haven't come in for a month. They've been like dog crap the whole year, and then they win Leaks Cup, and then for them to like go into U.S. Open Cup like that, no. No, 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 no. You can't do that to our season. No way. Yep. Amen. It'll be interesting. We're already getting heated about it, and we're going to talk about <laughs> it again next week because it's that big of a game. I mean, it really is. Great couple of weeks of soccer here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you couldn't ask for two better games in a row, though. No. I mean, from I mean, actual like standpoint of like, how big of games they are and what they mean to the season from a season standpoint in MLS, a cup game that you could potentially go on. And I think you'd win prior to the playoffs. If I'm not mistaken on the open cup games, I think they finish that off. Like if we make the finals slash when we make the finals, I think that'd be in September. I don't know if you guys can think of that off the top of your head or not, but. You say we're in the semis? We're in the semis now. The finals, I think, would happen before the playoffs for the MLS. I'm pretty sure. That would make sense. Yeah, I would think so. Which would be cool to have a trophy, you know, going into the, like, stretch just to propel them even more. They can do anything. (laughs) Um, Do you guys want to give me your predictions for, uh, for Sunday's game? Sam, let's hear it. Uh, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with two one FC Cincinnati. Okay. Two one. Who uh, does Bupenza get on the board? Yeah, big strike. Long, long range strike. Yeah. <laughs> Zach, what about you? I'm gonna go with three one Cincy. I think we're gonna be able to hold them off, um, similar to like we did previous game but not have them score that second mat- second goal i think uh i think we'll dominate all right i would love to see a just dominant performance to lead us into that next game like we've been talking about i've been kind of like i said flirting with the idea of uh, a tie game but i think um to zach's point on the scoring part of things and the way that we've had a break in the last couple weeks um three two i think we're on three two and uh, FC is going to win 3-2. Yes, sir. So any final thoughts on Hell is Real as a preview for Sunday? Are you guys going to be watching live then? Oh, yeah. It's a Sunday. Not doing yeah. anything. Yeah, exactly. It's a Sunday, yeah. Also, so, wife, wife's boy. not home for the weekend, so I am by myself. It's going to be great. find some FC fans, man. <laughs> get, get together and watch it. But my, like my I dog. said earlier... <laughs> Your dog, yeah, there you go. That's a good one. Um, I'm I'm just excited. I'm really, really pumped just to see the MLS season back because it feels like it's been like a year. Oh, it yeah. Has yeah. felt like it's had like 
three months of a break, you know, like an off season. Um, and all you've heard about everywhere is just messy, messy, messy. So I'm excited just for us to play again. So, yeah. Lastly, though, to to touch on the the trivia question of the week, um, to bring it around for the the hell is real theme for the podcast. Um, the, the question was since FC Cincinnati joined the MLS, how many clean sheets have there been in the hell is real rivalry? Ryan said one. Zach said zero. The answer is actually four. Four? Four. Wow. What? Yeah. Unfortunately, all four have been to the crew. Makes sense. Sam, right. tell me in 2020, when we beat them at home at Nippert, was it 1-0 or was it 2-1 that we won? Bobby Edwards was in goal that game. It was right after MOS is back. There was no fans in the stands, and I thought we had a clean sheet. Beat them 2-1. 2-1. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Four games, and they've won like clean sheets in those? Yep. Wow. I didn't yeah. realize that. And the same goalkeeper has all four clean sheets. Eli Room? Yeah. He's not there, so <laughs> change the scenes. Those three years were our PTSD blur. Yeah, not this gonna... is the nostalgia episode of like that's what used to happen and now it's not gonna happen. Right. Well, so I wanted to bring that up because I, I think it's about time that we get a clean sheet of our own. I love it. So I guess we never asked you who's your keeper then? Who are you playing? Yeah. What do you mean? We said the Celentano Khan question, so I want to hear it. Oh, um, I mean as far as the, the keeper wars, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, I, I think you stick with Celentano for the MLS and you go with Khan for the Open Cup. I think it just makes sense. Right. Well, let's hope for a big win on <laughs> Sunday. Um, hopefully by Monday, we'll be talking good things and then a heck of a preview for uh, the messy game next Wednesday. Um, looking forward to these two games like we've been talking about really excited about it um real quickly i'm wearing our new shirts here got some flying lion podcast navy and orange shirts got the logo here the logo on the back as well um so check it out you can dm us uh, if you're interested in those shirts um we'll probably have some more merch coming out too as time goes along um, also wanted to make a special note that we're going to have a big MLS interview coming up. I got postponed a little bit here, but stay tuned. We got some big games in the meantime. So we're going to try to put out a lot of that content now. Um, and then we'll have a, a, a surprise interview for you guys coming up here soon. Um, Sam, Zach, I will see you guys next week and everyone have a good week.